Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Maria De Simone, and I'm a professional astrologer. You can find out more about me and my work over at insightfulastrology.com. And today I am inspired to do this video, which will be a very advanced video. So let me just say that from the beginning. This is uh, an advanced predictive video. And I wanted to demonstrate how an astrologer could use multiple predictive techniques together to help refine the timing of a major life event, good or bad. And in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to be using my birth chart to illustrate what I see uh, in the year 2027 as a significant health crisis for me. So I'm making a prediction for myself about a significant health crisis. And I'm going to show you how I'm able to use five different techniques, predictive techniques together to help refine the timing of this prediction almost to the exact day that I believe this crisis will peak. And you may be wondering, well, what's the point of doing something like this? It sounds so gloomy. Maria is about to make a major prediction for herself that isn't good. Why do this? What's the point? And so before we even get into the techniques and me showing you this, half of this video is going to be a conversation about the reason why somebody would want to study astrology at this level. And I guess I am inspired to do this video now because I'm about to start teaching a, another group of my students predictive astrology. And they're about to come into this new, amazing technique that is so powerful. It allows you to see the major trends of energies and cycles for yourself or anyone and make accurate real life predictions. It is astounding and it is not something to mess around with. It's something to be treated as very sacred. And I believe if you are a student of astrology, an astrologer who is going to learn how to do these techniques, you have to have a certain understanding of the use, the correct use of the power of these techniques. Now, if you are somebody who is a client, somebody who is an astrology enthusiast who's interested in finding out how astrology can be used to make predictions for yourself and for your own life, you also have a responsibility. You have to sit and think before you hire an astrologer who is able to do what I'm about to demonstrate, before you hire an astrologer this skilled with predictive astrology, you as a client really have to sit down and consider how much of your life you are comfortable knowing about. And so your personal philosophy connected to fate and free will has to be established, has to be contemplated. Your, your mental capacity and emotional capacity, the bandwidth that you have as a human being to handle certain truths has to be contemplated before you hire an astrologer to do this for you. Because you are going to be able to see over and over again with amazing reliability patterns in your life that indicate specific cycles of good fortune and ill fortune. And not everybody is in a, a strong enough mental headspace to handle that, especially if we're looking at difficult cycles and a potential crisis ahead for you. So what is the benefit of looking at something that's difficult? Well, in my opinion, the benefit is empowerment because there is empowerment in acceptance, accepting what you cannot change. And when you see that something bad is likely to happen in your life, it allows you the opportunity to come to terms with it on your own, at your own pace, with advance warning, and to plan as much as you can possibly for this particular event. 
And when I talk about the health crisis that I'm seeing for myself, I'm actually going to explain to you how I plan to navigate it, even though I will not be able to change it or control the health crisis. There's a great deal of comfort that I have in knowing that I see this because it allows me to plan and mitigate some of the other things that could be going wrong at that time due to the health crisis. So I'll explain that later on. But again, I'm talking to you now as a client. Please make sure that you are in that emotional space where you have enough spiritual backbone and strength of understanding and acceptance of the power of astrology before you hire an astrologer to do predictive work with you. As a predictive astrologer, I will say, yes, I'm also a counseling astrologer. So when someone comes to me and there are difficult cycles, I do have a way of talking to you and counseling you through it. But not every astrologer who is a predictive astrologer is also strong as a counseling astrologer. And so I do believe that the client has to come to you ready to handle certain truths. And it is not uh, completely on the astrologer to kind of hand you the Kleenex and comfort you and soothe you when their job primarily is to identify these cycles of good fortune and bad fortune and to explain them to you and to give you the timing. That is the main job of a, a, a predictive astrologer. A counseling astrologer is going to be counseling you through that. Not every predictive astrologer is also a counseling astrologer. So do your research before you hire an astrologer and make sure that you're hiring the astrologer that's right for you. Some of you may be perfectly fine just hearing the facts, hearing the cycles, and then dealing with it on your own. Others may require some more of the counseling and insight that goes along with that. And so, you know, adjust your uh, hiring accordingly, do your research. So there is great strength in using astrology for predictive purposes. And that actually is the original purpose of astrology. That was the original strength of astrology. The original purpose of astrology was not character analysis, even though ancient astrologers could use astrology to determine a lot of things about a person's life and life potential. It wasn't so much about the psychological character analysis and the spiritual analysis that we use it for today in modern psychological astrology techniques. It really was about prediction back in the day. And this is why astrology is so strong as a predictive tool. So if you are into metaphysical subjects, the psychic world, psychic tools, anything like that, you might notice that when it comes to making predictions that are accurate, especially with timing, there really is no system that is as strong as astrology in determining that. I believe numerology is probably equal, a close equal to astrology in terms of timing of the major cycles, but astrology can get very, very specific. So I am not going to teach you in this video about how to use these predictive techniques, meaning I'm not gonna teach you how to use transits, how to use progressions, how to use solar arc directions. Um, I, I'm not gonna teach you about how to use annual perfections or zodiacal releasing. Those are very in-depth areas of study that you need to study with an astrology teacher. And I certainly do teach classes. I have a whole curriculum on astrology classes. I could take you from beginner to professional. So if you're interested in that, go to my website and get on a class waiting list for the appropriate classes that I'll be having. <clears throat> this video is not going to be able to teach you all of that. That is a big bear of a subject. And each one of those predictive techniques requires its own class and its own course of study. So you can be sure that a competent astrologer that you hire would have studied astrology for many years before they are able to make predictions like this. But um, what this video is going to do is demonstrate how an astrologer uses multiple predictive techniques together to isolate an event, 
the nature of the event, the, meaning the subject of what's likely to happen, and then to use the techniques to refine the timing to make it almost exact. And that is, that's such a gift to have, it really is. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, before I share my screen, just to review the techniques that I am going to show you in this video, the predicted techniques that I use every day for, for clients who hire me, I use transits, secondary progressions, solar arc directions to make my main predictions. And so everybody that hires me for one predictive session, you know, as a one-time client or as a return client, I'm looking at all of that for you. I have a coaching business within my consulting practice as an astrologer. So if you go to my website, you'll see that there's a, an option to hire me as your astrology coach. And that means that we see each other, we talk to each other more often than once or twice a year. And if you are one of my astrology coaching clients, then you have the ability to ask me to, in addition to looking at your transits, progressions, and solar arcs, to add on two other ancient Time Lord predictive techniques. One is called annual perfections, and the other is called zodiacal releasing. So I am actually going to demonstrate to you how I use these techniques all together. And again, if you are a coaching client of mine and you are interested in me looking at your zodiacal releasing periods, integrating your annual perfection year into our analysis with transits, progressions, and, and solar arcs, please let me know. And I will do that prep work for you because I am able to, to do extra work and extra things for my coaching clients. And if you are interested in becoming one of my coaching clients, again, just go to my website and review the coaching packages and see what's right for you. I can only offer zodiacal releasing and annual perfections at this time with my coaching clients. I cannot offer that with a client who's booking one session once a year for an update uh, because there's not enough time to look at everything. And, and the main energies that I look at for prediction are in fact, transits, progressions, and so on. So right now I'm limited to only being able to explore the ancient time word techniques with my coaching clients. So the, the Time Lord techniques are fascinating. And I've been playing around with them more and more after I graduated from a Hellenistic astrology course because these techniques are rooted in ancient astrology. So they're very different from using transits, progressions, and solar arc directions. And we're, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you how I would do an, a prep analysis for somebody who was a client who booked a session for the predictive astrology. And I'll show you how I do my prep work for the year ahead. And then I'm gonna show you how by then adding in the zodiacal releasing and the annual perfections, I'm able to really zero in on the main event for a certain year, a certain time period, and refine the timing. So this is going to be fun, even though what I'm going to talk about is not a happy event. <laughs> this is the astrology teacher and astrology student in me is very geeked out and excited about this because I'm excited that I'm able to show you these techniques in, in action. Okay. I don't believe, um, I know that other astrologers use modern and traditional techniques together, but I don't know um, out of the astrologers that do that, how many astrologers are actually predictive astrologers who use the techniques in the way that I do. You know, as, as professionals, we all develop our own system that works for us. And so I have a highly reliable system that works for me as your professional astrologer. And so all I can do is share my techniques and how I'm using the astrological techniques together in my own way. So that's what I'm going to do right now as I share my screen. So I am going to show you my birth chart first. And I believe that what you should be able to see is my birth chart. And it is always important to review a birth chart before you consider how transits and other cycles are going to impact an individual. 
And this is because if there is a natal aspect in your birth chart that's being triggered by a transit or by a progression or even a solo arc direction over the next year, that particular natal aspect and all of its potential is woken up in your chart. And you'll see the same is true when we get to the annual perfections and there's a diagonal release. Something is woken up. And if it's not in your chart to begin with as potential, then it can't happen. So it is always very important to have a thorough understanding of a person's birth chart before you even start to make predictions, okay? So any astrologer is, as part of their prep work, is going to look at your birth chart and get a good feel for what is promised as potential in your particular chart. So since I am telling you that we are focusing on a health situation, I will very briefly show you the areas that an astrologer would consider when we are talking about health cycles. And I am not a medical astrologer. I am not a doctor. I have no medical training. So please understand that this, you know, health astrology and health questions, I am using my knowledge of astrology only to talk about cycles of potential difficulty. I cannot diagnose you. I cannot tell you what's wrong, what will be wrong. I cannot tell you what the best treatment protocol is. None of that. My job as your astrologer is to give you timing and cycles. So if we are talking about a health situation, that's the extent of it. Okay. Now to look for health problems or health energy in general, we start with the sixth house of illness. And I am using the Placidus house system right now. But when I get to the techniques of annual perfections and zodiacal releasing, I will be using uh, the whole sign house system because you must use the whole sign house system with those ancient techniques. And so the sixth house is where you start. I happen to have the uh, planet Pluto in the sixth house. So I have a planet there. And my sixth house is ruled by Mercury because Virgo is on the cusp there. So part of my health pattern is going to involve transits, so arcs, progressions to Mercury, because <clears throat> Mercury is the ruler of my sixth house. Anything that touches Pluto can become a health transit for me because Pluto lives in my sixth house of, of health and illness. Now, the 12th house is also part of the health and healing axis. So you may also find that when planets in your 12th house are triggered, there could be a health crisis as well. And in addition, the ruler of the 12th house needs to be considered. So the modern ruler of my 12th house would be Neptune. The traditional ruler would be Jupiter. So as you can see, we're already looking at a lot and we haven't even finished because in astrology, the moon actually represents the physical body and is a significant point in medical astrology connected to the physical body. The uh, transits to the moon, cycles to the moon are very important. The same goes for the ascendant because the ascendant is where the soul enters the body, where the physical life begins. It's where you take your first live independent breath. And so the ascendant becomes specifically that rising sign degree, the degree of your ascendant specifically is a health point. It is a sensitive point for health as is the planet that rules your ascendant, which in my case is Mars. Mars is in cancer there over at the uh, fourth house cusp between the third and the fourth house. So we have a lot of health points. And finally, the sun. The sun, because it is vitality, it is connected very often in health, in a health profile situation. So I know that that's a lot, but again, I said this was an advanced video. So these are the areas that would pop out where if I saw significant cycles affecting those planets or angles, depending on the person's age, level, stage in life, I would consider health problems as a possibility. And that's important to remember. You know, if you're looking at uh, an 18 year old, it may not be as significant of a thing as it would be if you're looking at a 78 year old. Okay, that's just 
that's just the reality of it. So you have to uh, always consider that. Okay, so now, now that I've showed you the natal promise, right? And again, you would consider all the aspects connected to the sixth and the 12th house and to the rulers, all of that. Now what I do is I always create a one year time search. So sometimes I extend this to up to 15 months, but never longer than that. And this time search, any astrology software program can create a time search for you and you customize it the way that you want it programmed. The way that I do it is I look at transits, progressions, secondary progressions, and solar arc directions for the next year. And I fine tune it more specifically. So I'm not going to get into, you know, what planets I'm looking at or angles that I, I teach all that in my classes. Who, for students who want to learn the critical techniques. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I do look one year ahead and I'm gonna show you the time search that I've prepared. And so, I actually wonder if I can manage, I think I can, I think I have an ability to show two things. I really, really hope that you can see on this recording now, both my birth chart and the um, the cycles for the year ahead. Hopefully they are showing. Okay, so this is what a time search looks like using the software program that I'm using, Matrix Professional Software. And there are many different astrology software programs and they all have their merits. So you do your research and you find the one that is best for you. So as, as I look at any client's year ahead cycles, okay, I'm going to, it'll be printed out and I'll have a highlighter handy and I have my way of knowing what's important and I will highlight those cycles accordingly. So what I'm going to do is highlight for you cycles that are showing up as potential health issues, but you're going to see it's within a one year period of time. And so we have to refine it, but you can see that as we move forward with this time search, and I'm going to try, I'm going to try to draw, hopefully it allows me to draw and scroll at the same time. I don't think it is actually. Okay. So that's not going to work out. Let me, sorry guys. Okay, so I'm actually gonna stop sharing for a second and I'm gonna make sure that you can see the cycles. And so going back to these cycles here, as we move forward, so I started it in January, 2027. As we move forward, you will notice that transiting Neptune is going to start making a conjunction to my natal Venus, okay? So that's in March, that begins in March. I, I have favorable cycles to Venus. I have Uranus sextile Venus, Neptune conjunct Venus. And because I was born with Neptune trine Venus, I know that that Neptune Venus conjunction will be positive for me. But the reason why I'm bringing that up is because in my natal chart, Venus is opposite Pluto and Pluto is in my sixth house. And so after Neptune finishes the transit to Venus and pretty much while it'll be happening simultaneously, what is also gonna be happening is that Neptune begins to make an opposition to that Pluto. And as Neptune opposes Pluto, that can become a difficult health cycle because a planet in the sixth house is being hit directly by another outer planet. And so we can see, so I'm gonna try to, to show you here, I'm trying guys, bear with me. So what I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to move all this other Zoom stuff out of the way in order to do it. I am trying to show you the date of the first hit of Neptune opposite Pluto and it's April 2nd, 2027. So maybe you could see it. I'm 
trying to annotate a few, but for some reason I'm having a hard time, uh, having a hard time doing that. There, okay, I figured it out, there we go. So April is when this happens for the first time, this first hit, okay, great. We have an idea that one cycle is starting in April that could be difficult. So now we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep looking. I'm sorry guys, this is what happens when you're doing like a live video and you're trying to navigate, you're trying to navigate software and Zoom and they just changed up Zoom and I'm not fully functional with the changes. So I'm kind of learning as I go. All right, so that Neptune opposite Pluto in April. The next big cycle that is a health cycle potentially is June 7th, 2027, transiting Saturn conjunct the ascendant. Remember what I said about Saturn conjunct, about, about the ascendant in general, okay? So transiting Saturn, in my case, might be more difficult because it is known as my out of sect malefic. So it's the malefic planet that can theoretically do the most damage in my particular chart because I have what's called a night chart. So Saturn conjunct the ascendant, <clears throat> excuse me, might be a difficult health cycle. And that's two cycles now that are alerting us to the possibility of difficulty. When I teach predictive astrology, I harp on the rule of three. I will never, ever make a major life prediction for anybody unless I am seeing that event symbolized at least three times by major cycles. And it could be any combination of transits, progressions, solar arcs. It could even be um, there in your zodiacal releasing or your annual perfections, okay? So unless I'm seeing three cycles, I'm not making that major prediction. We have two so far. There is going to be another one. And I don't think it shows up exactly in the time search, but we need the ephemeris for it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, so in this case, that's the meat and potatoes of the transits. There aren't progressions that I would say are significant health progressions and solar arc directions. It's, it, I don't really see anything that's making me really pop my eyes out other than solar arc Mercury equals midheaven, which is not exact until March 6th of 2028, but it is certainly gonna be active about six to eight months before that date. Since Mercury rules my sixth house, maybe. Okay, we'll, we'll see. But now what you have to do next is always have your ephemeris hand. So that time search is not going to be fully complete. You have to know as an astrologer that looking in your ephemeris helps you see the smaller cycles and the timing of smaller cycles. And it is only by looking at your ephemeris that, that you can find the days that, unless you program it in your software, the days that a planet stations direct or retrograde. And the reason why I'm referring to my ephemeris is because that year, transiting Uranus, although it will start out the year making a sextile to my Venus, as the year progresses, it's gonna get very close to making an opposition to my moon. And it in fact will make an opposition to Neptune. And I didn't show you the dates in the time search, but remember Neptune is the ruler of my 12th house. And so that can become a health pattern potentially. So. When I look at my ephemeris, and I'm sorry, I can't really show it to you, I definitely see that transiting Uranus is getting very close to an opposition to my moon in 2027. It gets within one degree of an opposition to my moon. And so that can become a health transit because like I said, the moon is a point of physical, your physical body. But now what we're gonna do is, okay, we have some general ideas that there may be some health situation. But those cycles that I mentioned in the transits can be something else entirely based on rulership dynamics and based on what else is going on with other cycles, okay? I'm trying to focus on health right now. 
and I'm seeing the possibility with those transits. But now it is when you turn to the ancient Hellenistic techniques of zodiacal releasing and annual perfections that it really does indicate it could be a significant health year. So annual perfections is a time lord technique where you can Google uh, annual perfections wheel and based, based on the age that you are for any particular year, a different planet becomes your time lord for that year. And that planet in your birth chart is woken up and all of the potential connected to that planet and the house um, is woken up. So every year, so you may be in a first house perfection year, let's say. And if you are, then the planet that is ruling your first house, wherever that is in your birth chart, it's woken up for that year. And the first house matters are woken up that year for you in a significant way. So in 2027, and by the way, for annual perfections, you have to use the whole sign house system. The whole sign house system is not being shown right now on your screen, but in my case, whether I use the whole sign house system or not, I still have the same sign on, on my cusps because I have an Aries rising chart and my chart happens to follow the natural zodiac pretty cleanly without interceptions. So in my case, I'm not changing it right now. I don't wanna spend the time to do that, but for clients, I will create a whole sign chart separately before I look at annual perfections or zodiacal releasing. So in 2027, the way that annual perfections work is the new perfection year doesn't start in January. It starts on the day of your birthday. And so for me, on my birthday, May 8th, 2027, I enter a sixth house perfection year. What is the sixth house perfection year about? It's about what the sixth house rules. In the sixth house, the primary signification is illness. It is also, <laughs> excuse me, it is also connected to work and colleagues and your routine, but illness. It's, it's the area of health and illness primarily. So using annual perfections says, okay, my sixth house is woken up starting in May of 2027. And that's important because we're starting to refine our timing a little bit more. And that means that from May, 2027 to May, 2028, the sixth house and everything connected to my sixth house is very much active and woken up, including Pluto. Pluto lives in my sixth house. And so the ruler of my sixth house, which is Mercury, any transits or cycles connected to Mercury will be woken up that year, for better or for worse. And anything connected to Pluto will be woken up that year, for better or for worse, as well as any transiting planet that goes through my sixth house during my sixth house perfection. And that is very important because now what we are able to do is go back and say, well, Maria saw that transiting Neptune would be opposing Pluto at various times over the next year. And guess what else is happening? There's actually another planet that's going to start to transit through my sixth house in 2027. And that planet is Jupiter. So I'm going to put up my birth chart again. I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to put up my birth chart. I was supposed to put up these cycles again. So here I go with the cycles. Sorry about that, guys. So you can see that even though we noticed that transiting Pluto was going to make an opposition. So Pluto begins to oppose, uh, I'm sorry, the last hit is January of 2028. I'm, going, I'm trying to find the first hit here. Pluto begins to oppose, 
Neptune begins to oppose Pluto April 2nd. So April 2nd is the first hit, right? And then we have me entering that sixth house perfection year, May 8th of 2027. And then it isn't until June 7th that Saturn crosses the ascendant, which was our other potential health cycle. So we're already starting to consolidate the timing here of when this health crisis can come up. And it doesn't seem to become an issue until after my birthday, because I must enter that sixth house perfection year first. And I don't enter that until May 8th. So even though April is when this Neptune opposite Pluto begins, we're gonna wait until after May 8th before we open that window of possibility of the health situation. And then we have June 7th as transiting Saturn crossing the ascendant, which could absolutely be an indication of a health crisis. And then another date, this happens again, October 12th, 2027. So what this does using transits along with the annual perfection year, it helped us to refine things a little bit more, but there is another transit. August 31st, 2027, Jupiter transits into my sixth house. Now I will tell you that date of that transit is going to change if you use the whole sign house system. And if you use the whole sign house system, the minute Jupiter enters Virgo is when Jupiter enters my sixth house. And so you have to consider that. And that actually will happen July 26th of 2027. So after July 6th of 2027, using the whole sign chart, Jupiter's in my sixth house. And even though Jupiter's, Jupiter's the greater benefic, Jupiter's job is just to blow up whatever is there already, for better or for worse. Jupiter's sixth house transits tend to magnify any existing health conditions, exacerbate them. And eventually it does help provide support in terms of finding the right healthcare practitioners and healthcare, pro healthcare protocol. But first it tends to exacerbate and exaggerate whatever health issue you're seeing. So we know that for all intents and purposes, between the end of July and the end of August, Jupiter is gonna be in my sixth house. And that's another big cycle to look at. So we're gonna stop sharing the screen using those techniques. And now I'm gonna introduce you to an ancient time lord technique called zodiacal releasing. This video cannot possibly go into the depth the breadth of this technique. Briefly though, you're using certain lots in order to uh, make your predictions. So the lot of fortune becomes the significant primary starting place. The lot of fortune will indicate, releasing from the lot of fortune indicates health cycles very often. Releasing from a point called the lot of spirit can indicate major turning points in your life connected to career and life direction, overall life direction. And some astrologers use releasing from the lot of Eros to talk about relationship transitions. Since we're looking at a health situation, I am only gonna show you the lot, of, the lot of fortune. Now, again, this is very complicated, very advanced technique. So there's a lot that I'm not telling you in this video that I just can't get into. But when you're releasing from these lots, you're gonna enter what's known as a peak period. Everybody enters a, a peak period for a certain amount of years. And about halfway through that peak period, there is something called a loosing of the bond. And when that loosing of the bond occurs, that can trigger a time period of a major transition. And there are different levels in zodiacal releasing that have different amounts of years or weeks or days or months associated with them. So there's a level one period that lasts for many, many years. There's a level two period that's shorter, that lasts for a year, a year and a half, it depends on the period. There's a level three period, which will be a few months. And then there's a level four period, which is a matter of days to a week. So we're looking at this and the big picture of zodiacal releasing is you want to see 
is the person in a peak period? And from that peak period, is there a cycle that's happening that is going to trigger something in the birth chart with a benefic or a malefic? And in my case, because my lot of fortune is in the sign Libra, it automatically means that uh, in my birth chart, I have Saturn and Mars, the two malefics in Cancer, which are cardinal. And I have Venus in Aries, which is cardinal. So in my particular birth chart, this is how individualized this gets, guys. In my particular birth chart, when I, we're releasing from the lot of fortune and something is triggered, there is this very difficult, complicated mix of very bad things and very good things possibly happening at once. So let's show you what it looks like for zodiacal releasing. And for this, I'm using astro.com and you go to their website and you, you have to play around with their Hellenistic chart in order to get your zodiacal releasing periods. And you must have an exact birth time to use the diacal releasing, okay? Now, when you're using the diacal releasing, like I said, you're gonna use the whole sign chart, you use the whole sign house system. And what that does is it, it changes with the location of my lot of fortune to the seventh house. And you can see my lot of spirit here is in the eighth house and my lot of eros is in the ninth house. Those are the main lots used for the diacal releasing. A lot of fortune is connected very often to health cycles. That's the one we're looking at. So I am in what is known as a peak period because I am in a period right now that connects to the cardinal signs. And you can see in level one, which lasts many years, I entered this peak period in Capricorn, November 5th, 2008, and I'll be in it until 2035. Within that peak period, uh, because we're releasing again from the lot of fortune and my lot of fortune is in a cardinal sign. Now that I'm in a cardinal peak period, this is when there's gonna be the most activity for better or worse connected to health matters. So remember I said, there is something called the loosing of the bond that will occur halfway through a cycle approximately. Well, on the level two period, which is a sub period that lasts, each period lasts about a year and a half or so. On March 6th, 2026, you can see that I enter this loosing of the bond. Now that loosing of the bond is trying to um, move. not letting me, and you're gonna to have to see this from the bottom. That March 6th loosing of the bond period, uh, I can't see the date on my screen of when it ends, but whatever's below March 6th is when it ends. On the level three period, and by the way, please note that loosing of the bond is gonna happen in the same uh, modality that you're in, in your peak period, okay? So that will always be the case because it happens halfway through the cycle. So it's a, like the opposition point. And the loosing of the bond symbolizes a major turning point, a major transition. And it could be good, it could be bad. It's just symbolizing a major, major activity period at that point in your life. And that activity period, because the loosening of the bond is happening on level two, it'll last for about a year and a half. But when we go to level three, we see something else very interesting. There is another loosing of the bond. August 15th, 2027. And that loosing of the bond helps us now to consolidate the timing of this big health crisis that I see. And then when we go to level four, we see another loosing of the bond. And these, these level fours only last for a few days, September 28th, 2027. Okay, so now looking at this, we started out with that time search and saw that 2027 seems to be a health crisis year, potentially. Then we added annual perfections and said, all right, after May, it looks like things could possibly get rough in terms of health. 
And then we started to see that over the summer, some of those transits, transiting uh, Neptune opposite Pluto, transiting Jupiter going into the sixth house, that that's active, right? And then we also look at the, the zodiacal releasing and all of a sudden it becomes very clear that this health crisis is likely to occur between the August 15th and September 30th time period because uh, you can see, sorry guys, I'm trying to get that back and, and bring the screen down more. Yeah, now, okay, so that level three, loosing of the bond, lasts from August 15th until October 22nd, but the level four lasts September 28th to October 3rd. So now we're down to a few days where we can say there could be a really big crisis. And it's across the board, guys. This is such a reliable indicator of a health crisis and the specific timing of it between August 15th, 2027 and October 3rd, very specifically. And we could even refine it more by looking at our ephemeris. Because then when we go to those dates between the middle of August and the uh, very early October, we see that on September 15th, 2027, transiting Uranus is at nine degrees, 57 minutes of Gemini and goes retrograde. And the day that it goes retrograde it is retrograding within one degree of an opposition to my moon, which can be another health transit. So I have to tell you that as an astrologer, I would be predicting for myself that most likely the middle of September, 2027 is when there is going to be a significant health crisis. And that health crisis can open up in the summer very heavily, most likely between August 15th of 2027 and uh, the middle of September, if, if I wanted a month time frame, But if I wanted to get really granular, zodiacal releasing and looking at my ephemeris at what else is going on with the other planets helps. And, you know, there's more that I could share with you. Uh, this video has already gotten so long. And I was just trying to show you how basically my mind functions as an astrologer and how I could use all these cycles together to very much define a specific time period and a specific event. So I am making a prediction for myself that around September 15th, between August 15th and September 15th, but closer probably to September 15th, I will likely have a significant health crisis. And Again, what's the point of even learning about that? That sounds so gloomy. Is this just going to do nothing but give me anxiety for the next you know, three and a half years of my life? No, actually, no, quite the opposite, because I am someone who is uh, who benefits from looking at her astrology, who has the right perspective about looking at her astrology. And so I, knowing that that will be happening, I will be able to plan for it as much as possible. I will uh, plan for it financially as much as possible because I will assume that whatever this health situation is will make me unable to work for a certain amount of time. So financially, I will prepare for it. I will prepare for it geographically where at that point in my life, I will make sure that I have people around me, a support system uh, to help deal with the physical part of this potential illness. There are concrete things that you can do when you're looking ahead at a crisis to plan for it. And again, the other strength of this and of knowing this is knowing when it will end. And so I know that that crisis will end. It will not last forever. It will not kill me. And 
looking at those cycles and seeing when they ease up is a certain strength because that benefits knowing the beginning, middle, and the ending of any good or bad cycle. So this was turned into a long video and I was trying very hard to make it not technical, even though it's an advanced video, but I don't think I succeeded there. So I apologize. Um, but for those of you who stayed with me to the end of this video, thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that you learned something from it. And again, if you're an astrology student, these are techniques that I will teach you as, as you get more advanced. If you are an astrology client and you are interested in this level of prediction, know that anybody that hires me is going to get a full year of transits, progression, solar arc directions used. This particular example was not heavy on progressions or solar arcs, so I didn't really get into that too much. But if you are a coaching client of mine and you would like me to look at your perfections, annual perfections, and your zodiacal releasing, just ask and I will prepare and happily do that and discuss the findings with you. All right, so have a great day, everybody, and let me know uh, if this video was helpful in the comments. Take care.